good evening friends uh, this is shiva kumar and uh, uh, we have already uh, gone through the sap wm uh, functionalities configurations and everything and in this part of uh, video actually uh, i would like to explain uh, the warehouse uh, inventory and how the space is managed equipment is managed and then uh, labor resources and direct flow of materials and information from receiving and put away and put away to light assembly order picking value added processing and shipment so normally everybody knows that so what is supply chain execution system so supply chain execute system is nothing but the managing inventory of barrows managing the uh, warehouse space, material handling equipment, labor, transportation uh, and transportation of resources in real time to assure timely and uh, error free uh, fulfillment and uh, delivery and the visibility of order status uh, that is I mean visibility of the order status throughout the supply chain so that is very important and uh, many many people actually normally will ask me actually uh, is a storage uh, that is where is a yeah, just a storage uh, facility so the answer is not because uh, the warehouse is not only the storage facility because it gives a lot of advantages to one company so uh, however actually uh, in a main logical system design the role of warehouse is more uh, properly uh, can be viewed uh, as a switching facility I mean actually you are shifting from one facility to other facility and uh, we can say the contrasted to the uh, storage facility so actually um, it's a we have uh, say actually warehouse is nothing but the inbound and the outbound cross docking and uh, uh, conventional warehouse uh, uh, relocations and then ASRS in particular region uh, so a uh, lot of receives a lot of issues so uh, everything can be controlled through your uh, web web systems or uh, through uh, RF systems okay and actually here we have different uh, I mean normally in a day-to-day Barrows terminology we can say uh, different zones or different locations but in SAP we call different storage types and all so we have receiving storage and then uh, we have that uh, put away storage we have the order processing locations picking and replenishment uh, staging and loading shipping task management uh, inventory management so all these things can be controlled using labor management and then we have yard management and actually we have the integrated transportation management systems so everything can be con uh, controlled through a uh, material handling uh, drive control or data entry services and all these things are uh, I mean interface to uh, customer supplier carriers or admin or finance or uh, purchase or order management systems manufacturing that is MRP and MES and actually planning and demand so uh, customers uh, customers and customers so everything uh, all these systems are tightly integrated and uh, so actually normally people will ask actually what are all the material handling interfaces so I can say conveyors and then palletizer AGVs that is automated guided, guided vehicles uh, that is pick pack to light pick to light or pack to light carousels as or as there is automatic storage retrieval systems so what are what are the important thing where uh, we can define the system interfaces so system interfaces i can say as already told purchasing order management mrp that is material requirement planning manufacturing execution systems mes and the labor uh, standards and lms and the uh, labor uh, i mean uh, I mean, there is labor standards and LMS and load planning and uh, uh, freight uh, rating TMS slotting slotting is a kind of a special management uh, 
say a uh, special operation or a special task in EWM. So uh, yeah, these, these are called, I mean, actually we have different types of value added services. So these, these are the, uh, we can say actually, it's our, these are the more cri important criteria when we uh, discuss about the warehouse. And then we comes receiving. So receiving uh, actually in the sense actually for inbound advanced shipping notification or purchase order receiving or carrier uh, appointment scheduling and the pre-tagged uh, say receipts and then blind that is unanticipated receipts and then load tagging or labeling uh, then quality assurance and then returns so these are the important thing so uh, normally uh, I mean many people have in mind that what are the benefits of implementing warehouse so the, the first point benefits in this what are the advantages so consolidation so here what is consolidation ship and consolidation is a is a kind of thing where uh, all the uh, say uh, in materials are uh, coming inside and outside can be clubbed and uh, can be grouped together so say for example ship and consolidation is an economic benefit of warehousing and with uh, with this arrangement the the consolidation of warehouse receives and the consolidated materials from number of plants and destinated to a specific customer on a single transportation shipment so i hope actually it mean a different uh, low i mean different materials from different plants right actually some mixed materials from different two or three plants can be clubbed together and is issued to a single customer specific customer on a single transportation shipment and second benefit the benefit or the i mean it's an actual realization of the uh, possible transportation rate and reduced congestion at the customers receiving dock so we can avoid the congestion so we can uh, streamline the supply of uh, issue of material to the end customer so um, so now we are talking about the consolidation so the we can say the primary benefit of consolidation is combining the logistic flow of several uh, small equipments to a specific market area. So consolidation of warehousing may be used by a uh, single uh, firm or a number of firms may join together and may uh, and use for higher consolidation services. And then uh, through the use of such program, each individual manufacturer or a shipper can enjoy uh, the the lower uh, total distribution that could be uh, realized on a direct shipment basis individually. So these are the uh, I mean consolidation advantages. And uh, next we have uh, say actually you, uh, I hope you are getting right. Actually, what is the thing is we have there are three plants: plant A, B, C, and the, the materials from each location a plant so can be uh, consolidated at the various location. And can that issue that uh, issue can be clubbed to a uh, the customer A, B, C like that. So it is consolidation. Consolidation is nothing but uh, adding each and all the things actually from the different locations into single uh, in single stock in single uh, single uh, load uh, for for a particular customer. Uh, on a single tra transportation, uh, single transportation, I mean, uh, it's a kind of, uh, uh, I mean, so that actually we, we can avoid the congestion at the uh, receiving, I mean, at the uh, receiving point at the customer location. So they can easily track from which, uh, plan, from which uh, vendor it is coming. So everything can be easily tracked. And second one, break bulk warehouses. Break bulk warehouse is, operation is nothing but we are uh, grouping together the similar to consolidation that except that no storage is performed and the break uh, bulk operation receives a combined uh, I mean I mean actually receives it receives a combined customer orders from manufacturers and ship them to individual customers okay it, it would receives in bulk and say, uh, send that shipment to individual customers that is an important thing and break bulk warehouse sorts or splits the individual orders and arranges for uh, local delivery so that that is a third point 
and the final point actually because of the long distance of movements in a, a large shipment so uh, the transport costs are lower and there is little little difficulty uh, in tracking of goods movement so that is also a big advantage and the break bulk warehouses say for example the plant there is one plant a and where the material is uh, i mean managed break bulk warehouse method and so that actually different customer individual customers can receive that material from there so uh, i hope actually you can understand the operation in consolidation from different plants the individual uh, the materials are consolidated and issued to customers and here actually break bulk cooperation is just opposite or there is only one plant and actually the uh, in break bulk warehouses custom customers may be a b c like that different and individual customers can receive that material and uh, say example processing and postponement so if if in any warehouse can be uh, used to postpone uh, i mean it, it is a common practice postpone or the, or delay or uh, production by performing processing and uh, uh, highlight the manufacturing activities and the third one the warehouse with packing or labeling capability allows the postponement of uh, say final product until the actual demand is known so that is important thing for example the vegetables can be processed and uh, canned in uh, in the uh, brides at the manufacturer brides can it's nothing but a tin kind of arrangement some packaging that's what they are calling as a brides in the case of european countries and uh, if for example uh, north america and south america those areas actually they are calling as a brides so brides can cans with uh, no pre-attached labels there is no uh, pre-attached labels it is just an informal uh, way of packing the uh, vegetables or materials in interest and use of brides for private label product means that the item does not have to be uh, committed to a specific customer or pa uh, or package um, uh, package configuration at the manufacturer's plant and once a specific customer order is received uh, the warehousing can complete the final processing by adding the label and finalizing the packaging and next one processing and postponement provide two economic benefits you are getting right here processing and uh, postponement so this will uh, bring economic benefits it's not economic loss it's a benefit and first risk is minimized because the final packaging is not completed until an order for a specified uh, specific label and a package has been received and second the the required level of total inventory can be reduced by uh, using the basic products uh, say brides for variety of labeling and packing of configurations and economic benefit of uh, say stockpiling comes from the uh, need of seasonal storage there may be a seasonal warehouse that can be there say uh, the uh, case of in case of sugarcane plant sugarcane and sugar industry those are seasonal uh, storages and for and also for example uh, the lawn the lawn furniture and uh, toys are produced year round and primarily sold during the very short marketing period say for example during the summer time or a vacational uh, say christmas or kind of thing and in contrast agricultural products are harvested specific times that is called that's what i told the sugar cane and with the subsequent consumption occurring throughout the year but port situation require varo stockpiling to support the marketing efforts okay and uh, stockpiling provides an inventory buffer okay it's an inventory buffer it's a short time buffer which allows the production uh, efficiencies within the contra within the contrast uh, in, uh, imposed by the material sources and customers so uh, i hope now we have the five basic uh, service benefits are uh, can be achieved through warehousing it is first one is a spot stock and the second one is assortment and third one is mixing and fourth one is production support and fifth one is market press presence okay and uh, spot stock when I, mean, I like to explain about sp uh, spot stock spot stock is nothing but under uh, spot stock the say for example the selected amount of firms product line is placed uh, or a spot 
uh, stock in your warehouse to fill the customer orders during the critical um, marketing period and in particular this manufacturers with uh, limited or a highly seasonal product lines are partial to these services and rather than planning uh, uh, inventories the warehouse facility facilitates on year round basis means year round basis actually that is very important or shipping directly from the manufacturing plants and delta and in time delivery and uh, say can be uh, this will substantially reduce the inventory commitments to a strategic market okay and next one is assortment an assortment warehouse uh, stocks products combines and uh, in anticipation of uh, customer orders okay it will combines all the customer orders anticipation anticipation and assortment may present multiple products from uh, uh, from different manufacturers or special at all, uh, assortments as specifically by the customer and in uh, final case for example the uh, say athletic wholesaler in the sports wholesaler would uh, stock check from a number of clothing supplies suppliers so that uh, the customer can be uh, offered assortments so this is very important so um, and in second case the wholesaler could create a specific team uniform including shirts pants and shoes so he is combining all the requirements in single group so that is what they are calling as a wholesaler wholesaler would uh, able to create a specific team uniform including shirts pants and shoes so he can able to produce a same kind of variety of uh, uh, dresses and also uh, it will be unique in nature so uh, the difference between the assort assortments and sp uh, spot stock the difference is mainly the spot stock can be a complete line assortment and uh, and duration of warehouse utilization if a firm following a spot stock spot uh, stocking would start typically a warehouse with a narrow product assortment and place the stock in a large number of small warehouses uh, dedicated to a specific market for a limited time period and distribution assortment warehouses usually has a uh, a broad product line it's a it's just opposite to the narrow product line where spot st stock is there uh, whereas a distribution assortment is a broader product line and it is limit it is limited to a two uh, one or two few uh, st strategic locations and it's a functional year bound say that is very important and the com and combined assortment and the uh, also have a uh, larger shipment quantities which is uh, which in turn reduce the uh, transportation cost and next comes the mixing what is uh, mixing mixing is a situation where the truck loads of the product are shipped from manufacturing plant to the warehouses and each large shipment enjoy the lower possible transport rate so definitely because if you are mixing the product from different locations and bringing as a single shipment definitely the cost of uh, uh, transportation would be cheaper I mean somewhat reduced than individual shipments uh, where different carriers are involved so and upon on arrival of mixing warehouse mixing of barrels or with mixing of products the factory shipments are unloaded and the desired combination of each product for each customer of the market uh, is selected and that is a prime important important thing so during the combination there will be no confusion everything will be systematic and linear fashion and when plants are geographically separated say it is located in different different locations uh, uh, i mean it is geographically separated the overall transportation cha charges and warehouse requirements uh, can be reduced by mixing so this is very important and uh, next actually production support the production support warehousing provides a steady supply uh, of components and materials to the assembly plants and safety stocks on items purchased from outside vendors may be uh, justified because of long lead times or significant variation in usage that is very important and as a third point in production support uh, the operation of the uh, product support warehouse is to supply the feed I mean feed means input process materials 
components and sub assemblies into the assembly plan, assembly plant in uh, in an economic and timely manner so there is no shortage of material in a manufacturing location or a manufacturing plant is considered so market presence the for the fourth one is market presence while the market presence benefit may not be so obvious because it is often cited by the marketing managers as a major advantage of local barrows and the next point important point the market presence factor is based on the perception of or belief that local warehouses can be more responsive to customer needs and offer quicker delivery than a distant warehouse because actually it's already known actually the warehouse which is located or storage which is located outside the city will take a longer time than a warehouse which is located within the city or a, uh, it's a local warehouse so it's a, even though the size of the local warehouse is uh, i mean within the city is more it will cater the user i mean end user requirement it will immediately supply that so in case of uh, say for example sarona stores located at uh, uh, the in, in the heart of the city of chennai he can cater the all people requirement to needs and everything then a big uh, wholesaler or a big uh, uh, walmart or whatever may be actually the big uh, retailer or a distributor in a wholesaler situated outside the uh, say outside the say outside the city outskirts with the cost and time and are considered a major factor and transportation also a big factor considered so uh, the shops mean our warehouse or shops here we are just explaining the shop as a sarana stores in chennai so they can people can uh, go and reach and easily can buy and can they can reach a house as we at the minimum time cost of transportation is cheaper and uh, carrying of uh, the good I mean goods through auto or some other cars are also in somewhat uh, i mean uh, better than compared to going uh, to to mean uh, going to a uh, long distance that is important so um, so as a result it is uh, it is also a thought of that local warehouse will enhance the market share and potentially increase the profitability and uh, now we we like to discuss about the warehousing or warehousing operating principle so once warehouse principle operating principle is considered it has to be determined uh, the use of warehouse so next step is designing so designing here uh, whether i mean uh, is a main factor whether the warehouse is small uh, manual operation or a large automated uh, facility like a coke plant or a pepsi plant where the warehouse is fully automated with uh, asrs uh, agvs and uh, automated conveyors and everything so the cost and everything design criteria handling technology and storage plan and uh, a usage of automations electronics it's a big deal for a small man for a small warehouse person who is uh, doing manual uh, warehousing operations so these are the important criteria first is design criteria so first if you consider the design criteria the warehouse can be uh, can be addressed with uh, a uh, physical facility of characteristics and product movement so mainly three factors can be considered in the design process that are those are the number of uh, stories in the facility say number of uh, say uh, we can say number of racks or number of uh, storage level I mean storage uh, uh, storage uh, levels or uh, that is nothing but number of stories actually uh, store stores stories in the facility and uh, one, one above the one in a, in a uh, in vertical fashion and the height uh, utilization that is maximum height and the minimum height also what is the maximum utilization we need to use what is a type of material and what is a maximum height for example for every storage uh, story stories and you know, what is a minimum height so what is a length, length breadth and height dimensions those things and then product flow how much uh, um, how frequent are the materials the material movements are available and what is a uh, what is the usage of each material what is its importance so that that, that we are calling as a product flow and uh, say uh, we can say actually efficient material handling using uh, automated uh, um, material uh, equipments and everything and effective storage plan so what is the exact storage plan they are going to design so these are the important things in design criteria 
and <clears throat> now we talk about the number of storage in the facility say let's say the ideal warehouse design uh, is limited to a single story nor in normal so that the product does not uh, have to be moved up and down so there is no movement of for up and down and there is no specialized uh, I mean, uh, material handling requirements are not there and the human uh, intervention is also uh, been somewhat reduced uh, so that is important factor and uh, use of uh, elevators to move the product from one floor to the next uh, floor requires the, the time and energy more energy is required those are avoided and the elevators also often have a bottleneck in the production floor since many materials handlers are usually uh, competing for the limited number of elevators so normally those were uh, designed those were designing the barrels will suggest to use uh, normally as a single story but actually in a day in, a, in nowadays competitive field we cannot suggest a single uh, uh, story of uh, storage it is become it is it's, it's it's a problem one actually now we need to go for high rack stories so that is mean more uh, suggested for the minimum uh, area of your barrels of course land cost also very important nowadays that is important criteria also that consumes a major barrels cost and uh, that is what i told actually so usually competing with a limited number of elevators that is best for the cost uh, uh, reduction in uh, virus operation cost and next one is uh, whether uh, while it is not always it is not always, it is not always possible that particularly in central business districts say for example kind of uh, uh, Delhi or Calcutta or in Mumbai or Chennai where uh, central they, these are the business districts right actually concentrated business districts the land is restricted or expensive so barrow should be limited with a single story yeah so that is important thing so and the height utilization so regardless of facility uh, size the design should maximize the uh, usage of available uh, cubic space uh, by allowing for the greatest use of height on each floor that is important thing and most of the warehouses have 20 to 30 feet uh, ceilings 20 to 30 feet ceiling that is 1 feet is equal to 12 inches and 1 inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters please uh, bear in mind that conversion factors and also uh, the modern automated and high uh, high risk facilities can effectively use ceilings up to uh, say for a height up to 100 feet okay so that is important thing and next one uh, through the use of racking or other hardware it should be possible uh, to uh, store products up to the building uh, up to the products in that is the, the we can uh, place the uh, storage uh, uh, level up to the ceiling by with, without touching the ceiling mean, till that uh, height of the ceiling without touching that we can able to construct the, those kind of uh, height utilization stories and finally maximum effective arrow site is limited by the safe lifting capabilities uh, of material handling equipment such as forklift you are getting right actually effective varro site is limited by the safe lifting capabilities of forklifts material handling equipment is called forklifts and next one is product flow warehouse design should all all uh, should uh, always allow the straight for product flow uh, through the facility so that is importance whether the item is stored or not and uh, in general this means that pro, i mean i mean actually or the, pro, the product should be received at one uh, end of the building and stored in the middle and shipped from the other end this is a common practice Where, wherever where, which I mean, wherever warehouse or which i mean any kind of warehouse we can see the product can be received at the one end of the building that is at the entrance or or the side of the building and it is stored in the middle and it can be retrieved or issued from the opposite end that the uh, receive uh, receive of uh, receive action can be made the issue can be done at the opposite side this is the general practice of the any warehouse and uh, the, the issue and receipt can be cannot be in a single place that is important and handling to, uh, that's what the straight uh, line product flow minimizes the 
congestion. What is advantage here? Means actually straight line flow avoids the advance, I mean, uh, say uh, avoids the congestion and confusion for a warehouse worker. That is very important. And handling technology. So handling technology in the sense is uh, uh, say actually uh, the handling technology effect, uh, effect gives a effectiveness and efficiency of material material handling technology. So these elements uh, forms a basis of principle that is moving movement continuity and uh, movement scale economics. These are the important things. Movement continuity in the sense movement continuity is uh, it is better for a material handler or a piece of handling equipment uh, to make longer move than to have a number of handlers make uh, numerous individual short segments of same move and uh, exchanging of uh, say for example the product between the handles or moving it from the piece of equipment to another uh, warehouse and increases the potential damage and so that in general uh, we can say the uh, the fewer uh, longer movements in the warehouse are preferred that is important and the movement scale economics is nothing but uh, which facilitates or imply the warehouse activities should handle or move the largest quantities possible. So um, we can move for I mean, more number of uh, quantities, volume. Instead of moving the individual cases, the warehouse activities should be designed to move groups, move in groups for such as cases or such as pallets or containers. So it will avoid the time and wastage of, I mean, uh, time waste in moving the material. So it will we can uh, group in a moving mass so that we can reduce the uh, effective warehouse operations and uh, say uh, the grouping of uh, batch batching might help the multiple products or orders must be moved or selected in a single uh, single time and while moving uh, while this might increase the complexity of individual activities since multiple products or orders uh, must be considered the principle this principle uh, I mean this uh, say this uh, principle reduces the number of activities and uh, number of activities uh, I mean that mean actually we can avoid the individual movements of materials and uh, thereby resulting in the cost of operation is reduced whereas the operation and we have storage plan so storage plan uh, is a third principle so, uh, according to that, a warehouse design uh, should consider the product characteristics. Okay, should con always consider the product characteristics, and particularly those pertaining to volume, weight, and storage. These are very important. Volume, weight, and storage are important thing. And product volume is the major concern uh, when defining the warehouse storage plan. And high volume sales or throughput or throughput product should be stored in a location that minimizes the distance that is that it is moved so such as near primary uh, isl and in low storage racks and uh, such uh, such a location uh, minimizes the travel distance and the need for extended extend extended lifting and uh, uh, low volume product can be assigned uh, can be assigned location that are uh, distance from the primary uh, ISLs or higher up in the storage racks. So these are the very important thing. And a storage plan normally, uh, I mean the plans should include a specific strategy for the product dependent on the weight and the storage characteristic. Okay. And um, sorry, actually. I was uh, I mean a little bit against that uh, I mean uh, against that uh, I mean, uh, the sun sunlight so my my, uh, my appearance will, will not uh, will give proper uh, I mean, it's not uh, properly visible so now I think now it's okay right so uh, what I tell I mean what I told is that uh, the plan should include the specific strategy for the product depends on weight and storage characteristics and relatively heavy items should be assigned to the locations uh, how to ground to minimize the 
the effort and risk of uh, heavy lifting and uh, thirdly the bulk bulky or bulky means a heavy material or low density product require extensive storage volume uh, so the open floor space or high level racks can be used for them okay and that is a coal or a kind of uh, say for example some can uh, some different uh, uh, bismuthite kind of materials or a steel kind of steel plant where the materials can be placed at the open air that is important on other hand the similar small smaller items may require storage shelves or drawers and the integrated storage plan uh, consider and address the specific characteristics characteristics of each product that is important and what are the no, norm what are the normal uh, layouts of date objectives of warehouse so normally in normal ma the maximizing the warehouse capacity the efficiency of the warehouse movement and the maximizing the productivity so these are the uh, uh, important aspects of where uh, i mean uh, aspects of warehouse layout and alternative warehouse strategies are so private warehouse public warehouse and uh, contract warehouses a private warehouse is a one where the facility is owned and managed by the uh, by the same enterprise that owns the material or uh, owns a material or a, or a case of vendor handle and stored at the facilities their own warehouse and public warehouse in contrast uh, it is operated and um, and independent um, uh, business uh, offering a range of services such as a storage handling and a transportation on the basis of a fixed or a variable uh, fee that is important and the uh, public warehouse operates generally of uh, i mean uh, operators generally offer relatively a standardized services of all clients so it's there common to uh, say uh, all the people i mean all the people actually they are just providing uh, i mean the, the, the space for the rent so different people can use their uh, public warehouse and they can uh, operate that warehouse they can store the their material and the space can be segregated within the public warehouse and each uh, say for each uh, uh, space can be reserved for a particular ex uh, vendor or a customer so in the sense actually who is owning that material i'm telling so who is owning the material can use that uh, common i mean uh, the subdivision of common space so x is assigned to one person y is assigned to storage for another person like that and contract uh, warehousing uh which which is uh, evolving the public warehouse management provides a benefit of both the private and public alternatives and contract warehousing is a long term uh, that is mutually benefiting the arrangement which provides a unique and specifically uh, say uh, tailored uh, specifically tailored or designed warehousing and logistic services and exclusively to one client where the vendor and the client share the risk associated with the operation that is important and important dimension that differentiate the contract warehousing operator from the public warehouse operator or the extended time frame so the time frame is a, is a differentiating here uh, for the for the services for the service relationship labor services exclusively for shared risk and the private warehouse is operated by the firm uh, owning the product actually and uh, actually the facility however may be owned or leased that is important and decision as to which strategy best fits an individual firm is uh, is essentially decided by the financial needs that is very important and <clears throat> next thing uh, often uh, uh, it is not possible to find a warehouse for a lease that first the exact requirement for the i mean uh, say for example we cannot every time we cannot say we can get a warehouse for storing the exact requirement of the firm that is not, not at all possible so actually we have on the basis of uh, the range of speci specialized operations performed the public warehouse warehouses are classified as general merchandise or uh, refrigerated uh, special commodity uh, bonded warehouses and household household goods and the furnitures so these are the different uh, 
types of warehousing uh, uh, tech, I mean, warehousing methods, and each warehouse type uh, dif uh, differs in material handling and storage technology as a result of production environment and characteristics. So, bonded, bonded warehouses are uh, licensed by the government to store the goods prior to the payment of taxes and duties. And commodity warehouses are designed to handle the bulk material, uh, say bulk material uh, or items which uh, say uh, with uh, special handling of uh, uh, considerations, with special handling of considerations uh, such as tires or clothing. These are called commodity warehouses and uh, uh, or consumer goods kind of thing. And refrigerator warehouse, nothing but either frozen or chilled uh, materials can be handled and maintained for, say, for example, food or medical and chemical products with a, spa, with a special temperature requirement. Say, for example, in, uh, we have Met Plus uh, uh, pharma, Met, Met, Met Plus pharmacies there, and they are doing, uh, say, for example, they are uh, operating their uh, warehouse at the at the KSA actually outskirt of a city and uh, and all this uh, uh, whenever the requirement is there whenever order is placed by the end customer they can take the goods from the uh, main warehouse and this and uh, issues that to the to the retail outlets or the, the medical shops we can say so this is a operating uh, uh, principle and the general merchandise merchandising warehouse are designated, are designated to handle the uh, general package commodities uh, such as paper, uh, small appliances, and household supplies. These are very important. And uh, for example, uh, say for example, in our case, actually, we can say um, uh, say example, cigarettes are often stored in bonded warehouses prior to have uh, the tax stamp applied. So this is a kind of a tax we need to pay to the government. So cigarettes can be stored in some places. That is called the bonded warehouse, something like that. And the tactic, this tactic saves a firm's money by delaying tax payments. It also reduces the inventory value substantially. This is a very important thing. And this uh, exert very uh, light control over all movements uh, that is in and out of the facility since the government documents must be filled for each move. So actually while you are moving the stock from the, from the warehouse, actually you need to file a bar, say for example, a document that will persuade the government to track your material movements and everything based on that, they will issue the tax uh, slip and everything. So these are important things. And finally, a house, household goods or furniture warehouse is designed to handle and a store large bulky items such as appliances and furnitures. So uh, these are the different types of warehouses. And uh, many public warehouses offer combination of these operations. Okay, combination of all these bonded and uh, commodity warehouses, general warehouses like that. And contract warehousing combines the best characteristics of both private and public operations. That is also important. And the long-term relationship and the shared risk result in lower cost uh, than the typical public warehouse arrangements okay and contract warehouse operations can provide benefit of uh, expertise flexibility and economic uh, say economic of scale by sharing the management labor uh, equipment and information resources across a number of clients so it is a contract so it's a best advantage of contract uh, warehousing okay and the planning and distribution warehouse so <clears throat> this is very important criteria. So initial decision of warehousing are related to planning as everybody knows. And second thing, a master plan of the layout space requirements and uh, and say material handling design uh, should be uh, developed, uh, should be developed first and then the specific uh, site of the warehouse is selected. And second thing, these decisions establish the character of warehouses which in turn determines a degree of attainable handling efficiency so even though actually whatever i am telling here actually our our main design criteria i hope actually it is very boring for the uh, for the sap guys to understand I mean uh, not understanding it is a little bit 
boring for that but it is very essential what what is the impact barrows and what is his principle operating principle what is his benefit what are the types of warehousing how the site is selected how is the how is the how is the uh, uh, stories are uh, built and how what is the maximum capacity of each warehouses so all all these things can be uh, very very much required so and now actually we uh, we need to talk about the site selection for the warehouse is very important in the, as in the fact of uh, warehouse design so location analysis and techniques are available to assist in a selecting a, a general area for the warehouse location and, uh, and uh, next thing once location is completed a specific building site must be selected and the three uh, the, that is uh, we need to we normally actually people will go for three areas in a community may be considered for a location and the three areas are com commercial zone whether it is a commercial and the more uh, populated area and uh, uh, and uh, outlying areas served by the motor track only motor track only and third one is central or downtown areas so it depends on the usage and uh, management objectives the primary factor in selection of this are availability of service and cost and second one the cost of procurement uh, is the most important factor governing the selection cost is always a predominant one without cost why we are going to, to run a business for uh, for earnings so cost is very important thing so next one warehouse need to be located in a major industrial area that is it is near to the industrial area so that many customers will come and they will store the material their manufactured goods in the particular warehouse so it is used for the easy distribution or easy material handling where the material where this uh, those uh, warehouses are situated near to the commercial zones and uh, they can easily can get a truck for tra transportation so it is made it is due to the and near to the central core area of uh, population so many things are there we cannot store inside the warehouse i mean inside the manufacturing location that we cannot uh, some uh, uh, say for example some retailer or distributor cannot come into the plant so they materials can be located at a some distance location uh, distance location in the sense out of the plant out of the premise the manufacturing premise and they are placed in nearby zones that is important and <clears throat> in many cities uh, once uh, one observes warehouse among the industrial plants and in areas uh, under the uh, zone for light or heavy industries so that is important and interestingly this is not uh, a legal uh, necessity okay it's not a legal necessity uh, it should be a business uh, advantages only that's what it should help the, uh, the selection or the site selection would help the um, party to help them to develop the warehousing uh, cost I mean warehousing uh, technique and reduce the cost and increase the returns that is important because the most warehouses can operate under the restrictions placed on a commercial property so this is very important and warehouse need need not to be located in a major industrial area that is also important okay and in many cities one observes warehouse among the industrial plant and in areas zoned for light or heavy industry and uh, this is this is what I already told. So um, see and uh, beyond uh, the procurement cost, setup and operating expenses such as uh, rail sidings, utility uh, expenses, uh, taxes, insurance rates, and uh, um, uh, and high uh, highway access require evaluation. These are these are the main factors and then actually the expenses vary between sites that is also important and for example yeah yeah food distribution firm Ria, uh, recently rejected that uh, that uh, what otherwise appeared for the total satisfactory site because of the insurance rates and site was located near the end of a yeah, water water main that is also I means kind of uh, water water area should be easily available that is a very important thing and during most of the day, adequate water supplies were available to handle the operational and emergency requirements of a warehouse. 
and the only possible water problem occurred during the short period uh, on each day. Say for example, uh, 6.30 to 8.30 in the morning and from 5 to 7 <coughs> in the evening. The demand for water along with the line was so great that uh, su sufficient supply was not advisable to handle emergencies. These are the important points. And our next point is, because of this deficiency, abnormally high insurance rates were required and site was rejected. And uh, several other requirements such as satisfying uh, the site to be purchased, that is also important. It should be satisfactory before purchasing a site, the, the client should get a proper satisfaction before buying. And location must uh, offer adequate room for uh, expansion that is also important for future purpose and uh, necessary utilities must be available and uh, the soil must be capable of supporting the structure a huge structure of warehouse tracks and site must be sufficiently high to offer proper drainage and those are important and layout of warehouse depends on the pro proposed material handling systems and required development of a float man uh, to facilitate the product flow that is also important and it is difficult to generalize about what warehouse layouts uh, since they must be uh, refined to fit the specific needs and uh, if pallet are to be utilized the first step is to determine the pallet size that is important and the pallet of non-standard size may be desired for the uh, specialized products but wherever possible the standardized, standardized pallets should be used uh, because of the lower cost that is there that is one of the important criteria and the most common sizes are 40 by 48 inches and 32 by 40 inches 